Mike Stilwell, the uh, senior designer here at PoplarMechanics.com. And uh, we're here to talk a little bit about photography, uh, specifically photography of the sun, uh, what with the eclipse coming up, what, next month? Um, so if you're taking pictures of the sun, it's not quite as simple as just like pointing a camera at the sun, obviously. Uh, what, what, is, what is your like blanket recommendation to anybody who's thinking about trying to take pictures of the sun? Uh, I think starting with the equipment, uh, you need something that you could have uh, set to a manual exposure and something you have uh, a variety of lenses to choose from and uh, a filter you can put on the front of the lens so you're not either damaging the camera or your eyes, but more importantly to get the correct exposure for the sun because it's really bright. Right, yeah, so I mean, yeah, the sun is typically blinding so or so the, so the key to that is these these filters right do they just block everything but like high intensity light basically yeah with these you'll get to see sort of a, a very faint orange dot instead of the you know large blinding sun or just like 3d glasses except with the mylar right solar stuff in there yeah this is the same material that's in the uh, filter that i made here mm -hmm. you can buy this as a sheet on amazon if you pointed the camera at the sun without a filter on it it would be way too exposed uh way too bright for uh the exposure you'd want to make right um so the filter gets you to the point where you can expose properly and with a longer lens you're going to get uh, a little bit more detail in the sun yeah. uh, so it's like the lenses are basically turning down the volume on everything yes yeah, exactly because you're, point, you're pointing the camera at like the most the brightest thing that you can find so can it hurt the camera to to point it at the sun without a filter on it yeah so if you open, this camera is a mirrorless camera, but a camera like this has a mirror in it, but you can go into live view mode, which exposes the sensor, and without a filter on it, it would uh, possibly damage the sensor. So that's like the most the most basic element of something, of, if you want to start taking a picture of the sun, would be a sheet of this, uh, a sheet of this mylar. It's like basically as simple as you can get it, and then you put that over your eyes in the camera. Right. Uh, Regardless of whether what kind of camera it is, uh, let's talk a little bit about the like the mechanics of it. So, if you do have a, a more serious camera, a mirrorless or a DSLR, assuming you've got all the filter stuff, what do you think is your best setup for trying to take pictures of the sun, like lens-wise and like shutter time and, and whatnot? So, once you have your filter on for the beginning stages of the eclipse. Mm -hmm. um, a good setting would be about uh, 400 ISO, a thousandth of a second uh, at aperture eight or so. Mm -hmm. um, that would get you in the ballpark, and then I would slowly adjust the shutter speed, um, maybe up if you can, but I would get the ISO uh, up, depending on the camera that you have, uh, to get the correct exposure, and then if you can, I'd. Um, bracket the exposures. Now, I'm interested in the fact that you were talking about turning up the ISO, because I would think like when you're taking pictures of the sun, you would have it like all the way down. But I guess the filter is bringing the whole exposure down that you have to sort of bring it back a little bit. Right, yeah, you would you would probably want to stay at about 500 to uh, 2,000 of a second, because uh, the atmosphere actually uh, creates distortion that you want to uh, take really quick uh, exposures with. So. I would up the ISO um, so that you could uh, keep your shutter speed as fast as possible, but uh, you're probably not going to introduce that much grain or uh, noise from a higher ISO right. up to about um, a thousand. Yeah. Okay. So the keys. So uh, some keys that we have here are generally it's easier if you try to get a, a closer, more focused, tight shot mm -hmm. of the sun. Uh, you want to have a high shutter speed in order to avoid atmospheric distortion, uh, which can mean turning up the ISO, which is a little bit counterintuitive, at least to me, when you're pointing at the sun. Uh, any other, any other uh, like notes to write down on your wrist for the test? Um, you also want to get a very sturdy tripod for whatever okay. camera you have. Um, this camera with this longer lens is maybe a couple pounds, so you want to make sure that's sort of. Uh, you know, weighted down and solid as possible. Mm -hmm. 
you can also use a uh, trigger release to release the shutter, or what I do is set my camera on two seconds. Obviously the stages of the eclipse are gonna be the sun's there, and then the moon goes in front of it, and then the moon is gone, and the sun's back. Like, what are the, what are the important parts in between there that you wanna watch for? So it's about an hour and a half of the moon moving in front of the sun. And That's crazy. I didn't know that it was yeah. going to take that long. I only recently started looking into this. Yeah, so when it first uh, makes sort of contact initially uh, to when it's completely covering, it's about an hour and a half. Okay. Um, and depending on where you are, for this one, I think it'll be about two minutes of it completely covering the sun. If you're in the complete cover if, coverage path, which goes from like, from like what, like Washington down out through South Carolina, I think? Yeah, I think it's like Oregon, the coast yeah. of Oregon through South Carolina. And a band across the... Mm -hmm. During the total eclipse, uh, you'd want to remove the filter at that point. You can also take your glasses off. Once the moon is completely covering the sun in the total solar eclipse, you want to lower your ISO down to about 200 and up your shutter speed to uh, about 2,000 of a second. Because you're you're basically almost sort of shooting at night sky at that point, right? Like, how yeah. Would, I the totality is the whole moon will be blocking the sun. Are you still going to get any light around like the edges? I don't know. I haven't seen a full solar eclipse. Yeah, it's much darker than a moon photo. Uh, um, it'd be equivalent to just a sliver of the moon. Right. Okay. Uh, so you would change your settings to adjust for that. Yeah. So you're kind of taking a totally different picture during that like two minute window of right. what's actually happening. Right, so yeah. it's much darker. And two cameras. There's, <laughs> yeah. There's also not a wrong exposure because uh, the corona is very bright towards the, the middle and of the scene. What's the corona? It's corona? very dim. Like the beer. Yeah. Yeah, weird. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just, when I said it that time, it sounded wrong. All right, go ahead. Mm -hmm. It's, yeah. So during totality, the corona will be very faint, but uh, there's not a wrong exposure uh, for that because it's such a varied um, amount of brightness. Closer to the sun, it's a little bit brighter, but much further out, you have very faint uh, sort of tendrils of this corona. So some key pointers, and correct me if I'm wrong on any of these or I'm missing anything important, uh, is that you're gonna wanna have some sort of uh, shielding for both your camera and your eyes. So we have like the, uh, the eclipse shade or uh, just basically mylar sheets of some sort. Yep. Um, you want to have your, if, if you're taking the photos with an actual camera, uh, have your camera mounted on a tripod. So for stability, maybe use a, a, a cable release so you don't uh, juggle around the camera too much. A, uh, a nice tighter shot of the, of the eclipse is going to be easier to pull off. Yep. Um, you can take the you can take your your filter off once the totality of the eclipse happens because then you have sort of a different uh, you're sort of taking a different picture there um, and uh, try not to go blind I guess yeah <laughs> maybe one other tip is that uh, during totality and you're trying to take all these photos uh, I would I'm planning on stopping at the halfway point uh -huh. just so I can look around and enjoy yeah. the uh, the you actual eclipse. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, if you're fiddling with your camera the entire time and you don't get it quite right, um, you're just going to miss everything altogether. So yeah, um, that is true. That is a, a very uh, living moment and all that crap. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool.